Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX. You may know me from my YouTube series called The Rig Doctor. Today I'm here to talk to you about six pedal board mistakes that you don't wanna make when you're building your next rig. First thing you wanna do whenever you're building a new rig, just like if you're painting a house, all the work is in the prep. You really wanna make sure that you're planning out where things are gonna go, where it's gonna be most efficient for you to be able to reach pedals, and you're arranging in such a way that makes most sense logically for your wiring diagram. One thing that I love to do if you wanna make it super DIY is just get some blue painter's tape, lay out your pedals, and then tape around the circumference of the pedals so that you know exactly what range of pedal board sizes that you might need, and then you can go looking for those pedal boards from there. But there's also some great tools that companies like Pedal Train have come out with where they have their pedal board planner. So you can select from kind of a pre-made list of Pedal Train pedal boards and then build in your pedals from there because they have an extensive list of all the different pedals and manufacturers. So you can actually visually plan out your exact board just from that. So definitely be sure to check that out to make your planning process and the execution of that way easier. The second thing you want to avoid is putting your AC, DC power, and your audio cables too close together. Now, in some cases, if everything is perfect, there shouldn't be too much of a difference if you do end up crossing these. But if you can help it, it's good not only from a routing point of view, but also from a noise point of view, if you can separate the DC and AC power. So what do I mean by that? Let's pretend, for example, that this is my DC cable that I'm gonna be routing underneath my pedal board. If I'm trying to replicate what the best practices are in pedal board building, I would only want my cable to be running in parallel with this if it's carrying audio. And if it has to cross, you would want it to do it at a 90 degree angle. So you'd have power going this direction and you'd have audio going this direction if they need to cross. Now again, for pedals for the most part, we're dealing with fairly low voltages. So the necessity to do this isn't an absolute must. So don't feel like you need to bend over backwards to do some crazy routing to make this happen. But where you're able to isolate the supply, the DC cables from your audio cables like this, you wanna make sure that you're doing that as often as possible as a best practice. The third thing that you wanna avoid is having too much emphasis on using solderless cables. I have a couple of different varieties here of soldered connections that I really like. One of them is made by Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball has multiple different lengths that you can order of this so that it could fit between every interconnection. There's also a great one made by MXR, which equally allows you to order multiple different lengths, and you can get these in various size packs. The cool thing about these is they're not only soldered, but they attach heat shrink in the right place on both of these. So what it allows you to do is eliminate lateral movement because movement is the enemy of a quality connection and it's not gonna erode as you use it over time, as you plug and unplug it. Whereas if you're using solderless connections, there tends to be a lot more stress put on the cable over time and it's only mechanically held together by a screw where these are soldered in a gas tight solder bath, connecting these to the actual lug inside of the connector. So it allows it to have a lot more durability and rigidity over time so that you have a bulletproof guitar rig, bass rig, whatever type of pedal board rig you have. Now, if you're extra ambitious and you wanna save a little dough and you have a decent hand at soldering, you can actually buy really high quality bulk materials and it's a really, really inexpensive price to do it. Now, Sweetwater sells one of my favorite cables of all time, which is the Mogami 2524, which is a great interconnector cable. And they also sell a bunch of different types of plugs from tons of different manufacturers, from Neutrik to Switchcraft to Lava and Proco and many more. So you can choose your favorite angle if you wanna have a right angle, you wanna have a pancake, and then you can solder it right to the 2524 and be able to get a boutique quality patch cable for almost no money at all. The next mistake you don't wanna make is by getting a non-isolated power supply. I have right here a group of three of my favorite power supplies on the market, and these are all isolated power supplies. Now, what does isolated power supply mean? It just means that every one of the outputs on this, any one of these connections here that you're gonna be bringing out to your pedals through a DC power cable, it's all individually powered. None of these are shared. 
It's giving the pedal its own power individually and nothing is tied back to the supply in terms of the connectivity between each one of the subsequent outputs. So every pedal remains quiet, it doesn't have any shared ground, and it allows you to be able to operate your pedals efficiently with the best type of power running through it, keeping it nice and quiet. One thing that I'll mention about having a nice isolated supply is, is there's actually varieties even within them. So the Voodoo Lab one that I'm holding up now is a linear isolated analog supply. And then there's some that are switching supplies like the Strymon Zuma and the True Tone One Spot. Now these are switching supplies, which means that they use high frequency to isolate all these outputs instead of using a toroidal transformer like the Voodoo Lab. Now this is cool because you can take these to any country. You don't need to get a step up transformer or a step down transformer. You can plug these right into the wall and they will automatically calibrate these outputs so that it matches the voltage you need, will match the input voltage of whatever country you're in, and allow you to get nice clean power to all of your pedals with zero noise. So many times I have clients come to me and think that their pedals are not working, but what's actually happening is their connections have just corroded and oxidized, and they need an easy way of just cleaning that out. And Deoxid D5 is one of the cheapest, best insurance policies that you can take out on your pedal board, you spray this right in all of your electrical contacts, input, output, nine volt DC. It's fine for all that. You can even use it on your guitar. You can use it in potentiometers. This is literally a miracle in what it does in cleaning up scratchy pots and helping corroded jacks. You spray it in, you work it through a few times, you plug and unplug your input and output jacks, you plug and unplug your nine volt DC connector and it will clean up and mitigate problems that you didn't even think you had or that you even knew were possible. This is a really great thing to have in your gig bag, allows you to just always have a good backup. If you think a pedal is going down, it's starting to get scratchy, spray a little bit of this in there, work the jack in a few times and you're good to go. The last mistake you don't wanna make is you don't wanna be using your mama or daddy's Velcro. You wanna be using a pro level Velcro. This is 3M Dual Lock. And 3M Dual Lock is the most effective pedal fastener to a pedal board that is known to man, or at least is known to this man. It is incredibly hard to separate pedals from the pedal board and it really keeps the pedals intact if you're gonna be traveling with them, because a lot of times we open up our gig bags, we open up our cases, and we find that our pedals are just bowling balls inside of our gig bags and road cases. This prevents that from ever happening. Even on heavy pedals like Waz and volume pedals, a couple of strips of this will allow it to stay intact, stay in place on your pedal board, and literally not move unless you want it to. So I can't recommend enough getting some 3M Dual Lock. It is a lifesaver and the best Velcro that I know of. So I hope that this helped you avoid some pitfalls that many of us make when we're starting to plan and build a new rig. Of course, if you have any questions about these, you can talk to your Sweetwater sales engineer or put your questions in the comment section below and I will have one of our guys or even the rig doctor himself may come in there and chime in and give you some advice if you need it. And the links to everything here are in the description so that you can purchase any of these ones directly from Sweetwater's website. I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA the rig doctor. See you next time. <laughs>